Hello, good morning. It is Sunday, September 18th, <laughs> and I've decided to do another reading vlog. I decided that I'm going to do a reading vlog where I read some of the buzzier books. So the first book is a book that I've had on hold at the library for a while and it finally came in and so I'm like I need to read this one now because everyone and their brother has this on hold and so if I don't read it now then I'm not going to read it for like months potentially years and that is Babel by R.F. Kuang. I read The Poppy War years ago and overall I liked it but there were parts of it that I had some mixed feelings about but the parts of it that I really enjoyed were all of the stuff about like Poppy in school. Like I love stuff that takes place at schools, especially fantasy books that take place at schools. Babel feels like it could potentially be up my alley however some of the early reviews have me cautious about whether or not I'm gonna like it. Like I have a feeling I'm gonna like part of it and potentially not like the ending. The other book that I have coming to me is Trust by Hernan Diaz. This is a book that was long listed I believe for the Man Booker Prize and I feel like I saw so many people talking about this book. I don't know maybe it's just like if you're in those sort of literary fiction circles. It just also sounds really intriguing. However I have mixed feelings about books that are nominated for the Man Booker Prize. I usually don't like them and so I'm very intrigued to see whether or not this is an exception to that rule because those exceptions do exist and the premise itself just sounds really fantastic fascinating because like the way people are talking about it you can't talk about it too much because they'll give away information but it's basically like four separate stories and it's written like four different books almost but they're all related to each other and so I'm also just like fascinated from like a technical level of what happening in this book. And then the final one that I decided to just pick up partially because I wanted to read it and partially because I was like three feels like a good round number for a reading vlog is the new Jeanette McCurdy book. Everyone and their brother is definitely reading this book because it's literally sold out everywhere. Again on hold for it at the library but I don't think that hold's gonna come in anytime soon and so I decided to just do a 30 day free trial with Scribd again and I did this solely for the purpose because like, they have the audiobook available so I'm like great I'll listen to the audiobook of that using that free trial. Am I scamming the system a little bit? Probably but Babel is currently waiting for me on hold at the library and trust it says that it's been shipped from another library but it hasn't arrived yet and so I don't know when the arrival is gonna happen and it'd be nice if I could just do one trip to the library this week but my hold on Babel will expire on Monday. What I'm thinking right now is today I'm gonna start the audiobook of the Jeanette McCurdy book because then I can like clean because uh, things are feeling a little bit chaotic right now, both mentally and my environment. <laughs> my like thing that I've noticed is that like the state of my room is often a reflection of the state of my brain and right now my room is like on the edge of being too much and that is also how my brain feels. So I feel like if I clean a little bit it'll help me also work through some of the brain things that are happening. So yeah that's a little bit of a ramble but yes my goal today is to clean my room, clean some of the other parts of the house, listen to the audiobook. And I don't think I'm gonna go to the library today. I'll probably go to the library tomorrow which is the last day I can pick up Babel in the hopes that trust also comes in. If I have to go to the library another day this week it's obviously not that big of a deal because it's not that far from me but you know minimizing trips and whatnot, saving on gas, all that jazz. So yeah it's Sunday morning and I'm staying home from church today because I'm fully exhausted and so I'm gonna watch it online. I'm gonna eat. I made a little croissant. Let's be clear I didn't make this croissant. I got croissants from Trader Joe's <laughs> and I let them sit overnight as you need to do so they could prove and then I put them in the oven. That's all I did. I was not like rolling out dough with butter and whatnot to, to make a croissant. Let's be clear. But yes I'm gonna eat my chocolate croissant, drink my coffee, watch some church online and then get started with some cleaning because I yeah, I think I really need that clean.
Good morning, everyone. It's Monday morning. It's very early. I went to work out this morning. Now I'm almost spilling my coffee. Didn't spill. Great. Having my coffee and some eggs for breakfast. So yesterday, I listened to about half of the Jeanette McCurdy memoir, and it's definitely interesting. I'm not having quite the same reaction as the general public is to this book. It's very interesting because like right before starting it, or not right before, but a couple days before starting it, I had seen the book Bully's August wrap-up, or whatever her most recent wrap-up was, and she had talked about how basically like everyone loves this book and talks about how Jeanette McCurdy has really like worked through all of the crap that she's been through in her life and she brings up the fact that like no she actually hasn't. She's gotten to the point where she recognizes that really terrible things have happened to her and that some of the things that she thought were normal were not actually normal but she hasn't actually processed the trauma yet and I definitely agree with that assessment. There are certain things in this book that are like just presented as like this is a situation that I went through and there's not a lot of like reflection. This book is like just very much her taking note of all the things that have happened to her that she now recognizes were not normal but she hasn't processed it fully yet because there's a lack of again reflection and all of this and like to a certain degree you know she's still pretty young and still pretty close to all of this so like how much uh reflection and processing can a person go through in that time span or expecting someone to be able to do all of that work in a short time span might be unrealistic. There's a lot of stuff in here in regards to like Jeanette McCurdy's eating disorders and holy cow that stuff is so descriptive in nature. Like I'm not someone who like feels triggered by a lot of things but those chapters were very difficult for me to listen to. Not that I ever had like extreme anorexia or bulimia or anything like that but I've definitely gone through my food struggles and those chapters were very difficult to listen to and there's like no warning at the get-go. Like I mean if anything like the very first chapter or like first thing that you read is about Jeanette McCurdy in anorexia and so I guess that gives you a hint that that's gonna be a thing in the book but otherwise there's no real wording in here about what you're going to be encountering. I don't know if that's great for people <laughs> because depending on where they're at this is gonna be a very difficult book for people to read. Yeah. Yeah. I'm probably gonna take a break from that book today. I'll finish it because I am very interested to see sort of like what the end point of all of it is. I do think that some of the quote unquote reveals quote unquote in this book in regards to hey Carly and all that stuff like I already knew that even before she was like promoting this book. Not like the specific details obviously but I knew the dude was a creepo and stuff like that. So those things aren't as surprising to me but the stuff with her mom is and her family is really the most interesting to me and I would love love to see something from like her brother's perspectives or her father's perspective or something like that. Someone else in the family to see what they thought about everything and what the experience was like for them but that probably won't ever happen. I do plan on going to the library after work today because I do need to pick up at least Babel. I'm hoping that trust is in already because it's been like three days since they've given me a shipped notification. Now for me to finish my breakfast and get started with work. Hello. It is now evening time but I got a chance to go to the library and they had Babel and trust waiting for me. I'm so happy. So happy that this one came in. This is a little bit thicker than I was expecting it to be but some of the pages are not like super dense and like the text itself isn't as dense as I was expecting so it's a 400 page book. We'll see how it actually reads. This one I knew was going to be a junky book so I'm gonna get started with this one first. I was very surprised because when I checked it out it said that both of these have a month. I definitely thought that these would have like two week holds on them or two week checkout periods on them because that's how new releases often are but these don't. So that's quite nice. But yes, I'll start with Babel because that one is more in demand than Trust is. But also, I got some book mail. But one of these is a book I requested, but I don't actually remember what the book is. So we'll see it together. The other one is a book that was sent unsolicited. I could potentially like it. We'll see. So the first one is the one that was unsolicited and this is from Soho Press. They send me lots of stuff which is quite nice. And I like maybe like 50% of it. Oh, it looks, it sounds, feels like a finished copy. Let's see what it is. Ooh, okay. This is, this is a book I'm excited about. 
Sinister Graves by Marcy R. Rendon. She wrote a few mystery books and they were like published at like these smaller presses and I read them and I really enjoyed them and now Soho is publishing her and I'm very excited. This is another book in that same series. It takes place in the 1970s in like Minnesota, North Dakota sort of area. The author is a member of the White Earth Nation. This follows an Ojibwe woman and I love I just love these books and so yeah very excited to have this one. The second book is from W.W. Norton. Is it multiple books? Ooh, multiple books. So first up we have How to Turn into a Bird by Maria Josea Ferrada, translated by Elizabeth Breyer. I think I requested this one hoping that I would get it in time for Women in Translation Month, but that's fine. I'll still read it and like this cover is amazing. And then the other one is The Dream Builders by Ondrila Mukherjee. This one comes out in January of next year. I believe that this one is all dirty out. Oh no, it comes out in December. So these are both Tin House books and I tend to really enjoy the books that Tin House puts out and so they contacted me asking if I was interested in any of their upcoming fall winter books and these are two that caught my eye so I asked them for it. So yeah, very excited to pick these up eventually. One of the nice things about having a smaller physical TBR is that I'm getting to these books a lot sooner. So yeah, there's a little mini book haul. I don't really do those very often but I figured it's happening while I'm vlogging so might as well document it. So yes, it is now 7 30 p.m. I'm going to change into my pajamas and curl up with my book for the rest of the night and I don't want to think about anything else for the day. <laughs> so fingers crossed that that's possible and I make some good progress in Babel. Hello everyone, it's Thursday. So it's been a couple of days since I gave you a, an update, but it's been a busy couple of days. Um, I'm like maybe a third of the way through Babel and I'm really enjoying this. I'm into part two right now. So we're still like in the beginning stages of the main character being at Oxford. Yeah, this is like just everything I love in sort of like the magical school world. I know it's not going to stay like that the entire time, but enjoying the writing enjoying the world and the setting and stuff like that and I'm very intrigued to see where it keeps going but I'm very excited because I have no plans for this evening. So I've finished with work. I finished with my other work. Uh, so basically things for my Patreon and getting my YouTube video for tomorrow ready and things like that and now I'm going to shower then eat dinner, get started with the book, and then sit in that chair right there and read for a lot of this evening. So that's my goal. I don't imagine that I'm gonna get through this entire book tonight but I'm hoping to make pretty good progress over the next couple of days. Fingers crossed because we all know that my life rarely goes according to plan anymore. Uh, not in a terrible way but things just pop up and yeah I'm gonna just try to take advantage of some reading time while I have it. been a while. It has been I think like a week, possibly more, since I've last provided an update. But that's fine because I haven't had much to update you on. It's been a busy week. I bought a house. <laughs> so uh, as you can imagine that took up a significant portion of like my mental and emotional state. If you haven't had the opportunity to purchase a house, I'm just going to tell you right now to uh, properly set your expectations. The period after you put in an offer on a house and they accept it and when you finally close on the house and it's officially yours is a terrible time. <laughs> My experience wasn't even the worst but I was just like exhausted and over it <laughs> by the end of it was like do I actually want to do this but I ended up doing it so there's that and then in that was followed by a lot of days in office at my job so now I'm like very mentally exhausted from that and just like physically exhausted from that and so yeah now we're at Thursday and I actually now have some updates for y'all in terms of the books. I finished listening to the audiobook 
of I'm Glad My Mom Died. Overall, my feelings are that it is a good book in that it's very compelling. And you can definitely tell that like Jeanette McCurdy has been working on her feelings with her mother for a very long time. However, there's definitely like still significant parts of her life and her childhood that are not great that I don't think she's properly processed yet. I think that there's a lot of stuff especially in regards to like her relationships and dating and things like that that she just kind of like presents what's happening and there's a lack of like reflection on those subjects and I think it's because like the mom stuff is what she's processed first understandably uh, and now she needs to do the work in the other areas of her life the same way like we all have multiple layers of things that we need to deal with but yeah she's had a really difficult complicated potentially you could say effed up life leading up to this point and she's had to deal with a lot and so I can't imagine that at the young age of like 20 what four six I don't know how old she is exactly but at this point in time I don't think that's enough time to like properly process everything and even though I like went into this book mostly knowing like some of the bigger details like the big reveals or whatever there were still quite a few things that surprised me and shocked me uh, over the course of the story even like some things later in the book about again her relationships with other people where I was just like oh was not expecting that at all. So that was interesting. Is this a book that's like 100% worth reading? I don't know. I mean, I think that it's worth reading in this fact that I think if you don't already think that child actors shouldn't be a thing, this book might convince you of that idea. But I do have to say that again, this is a very like difficult book to read or listen to. There are like many times where she's like just describing things just as they happened. And it can be very difficult to hear and listen to whether it be because it's just like so very frank or it feels like very detached or it's just like a difficult thing to experience like especially the stuff in regards to her bulimia and anorexia and so yeah I don't know it's not like a book that I can wholeheartedly recommend to people if you're interested in it it is a very compelling story but I can't just like wholeheartedly recommend that everyone go out and read it or listen to it the same way I would with other memoirs that also deal with difficult topics overall I understand why it's getting so much hype and I do think that it's a very compelling read so I would say out of the three so far that I've been reading you know like that one seems like worth the hype that it's getting. Then the other book Babel that I've been working my way through this is quite the dense book. I'm a little bit more than halfway through this book and holy cow this this book has had some twists that I didn't expect specifically today almost knocked over my wine uh, specifically today while I was at work during my lunch break a big thing happened with one of the big players in this book, big characters in this book. If you've read this book, it's uh, what happens on the ship on the way back to England. So yeah, just completed that part. I'm still really enjoying this book. I know that things are going to change now significantly based on that like big thing that happened and so I'm very intrigued to see sort of like what happens in this last like third of the story. My goal is to just read as much as I possibly can tonight and tomorrow and this weekend and hopefully I will be able to finish it by the end of this weekend so I can get started with Trust which is currently sitting over there. <laughs> so yeah that's my little update and I'll keep you posted on anything else that might happen along the way. Um, it's like 11 p.m. at night but I just finished reading Babel because I just needed to know how it was going to end and yeah I love this book. This was a very interesting read. It's a book that I don't think I mentioned it when I first started reading it but like around the time that I started reading it was around the time that Queen Elizabeth died which was very interesting juxtaposition. No, just like parallels in conversation because this book is basically about colonialism. Queen Elizabeth dying brought up a lot of con conversations about colonialism. And yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this book. It's interesting because like the magic is so not really a part of the story. If you want like a real high fantasy book this is not it this is very much low fantasy like the lowest form of low fantasy that you could probably find which honestly I'm perfectly okay with. I like the fantasy books that are super low fantasy where it basically just feels like it could be in our world. R.F. Kuang basically creates like a parallel universe in order to have this whole discussion about 
colonialism and the way that people are forced either consciously or subconsciously to disregard their own culture and embrace the reigning culture so to speak and as someone who is of Indian descent it's just just a lot of things just really hit home with this book. I just needed to know how it was going to end because again it like parallels the real world and so I'm like sitting here reading this book being like I know that England continues to reign in our world. Is that going to change at all in this world? And uh, I don't know this is probably spoilers and so you know continue on at your own risk. I'll put some tags. So you can move forward as needed. Well, yeah, I don't stay up this late anymore. But there's no real answer given as to what happens to England as a country and its territories. Like, there's no resolution given in terms of, like, this war uh, that they're f fighting against or what's going to happen in the future to these countries and again i think that's like because it's not the point but i can definitely see like people getting hung up on that fact but i just really really enjoyed it and like the ending made me really sad but also at the same time like it just worked so well the main character in this book robin really reminded me a lot of ren from uh oh my gosh i can't i'm too tired to remember the name of rf kwang's other series he really reminded me of ren a lot just because of the self-flagellation nature of the way that like he just constantly wanted to punish himself for the things that had happened and ren kind of had a lot of the same qualities like the guilt really ate at both of them in a similar way. I never finished the series so I can't say like if they necessarily go on a full journey but I feel like this one feels a little bit more satisfactory but also this is a single novel as opposed to a full series which again just completely up my alley. So yeah another book that in my opinion worth the hype. I'm really glad that I got around to reading this. There's a lot of like things that I could talk about with this book. It's really interesting the way that she wrote this book. There's like just a ton of footnotes in here. Like she really worked on building out this world in a way that sometimes felt unnecessary. Like I appreciated the footnotes but after a certain point I was just like well you're just adding to lore here so I don't really need to read this because I'm not the type of person who's here for lore but if you like lore it's in here but also at the same time like the way the magic system works is very uh, loose and so if you like look too hard at it it doesn't quite make sense. I also like can't imagine the amount of research that RF Guang must have done for this book in order to learn all of these words in different languages and things like that like I know she works as a translator so ugh, she um has experience with some of this but like holy cow there's a reason why she's won lots of awards and gotten lots of like grants and things like that yeah she's she's definitely put in the work for this book and to me this was worth it partially because I'm a big nerd partially because I really enjoy character driven stories and slow paced fantasies and I love books that take place in schools and academia and things like that so this scratched all of my itches. I can't guarantee that I'll scratch everyone else's depending on what your expectations are for it but I love this so another win. I'm very surprised. I very much expected this to be a big dud of a video because usually I don't get along with like very hyped books like maybe my expectations are often too high. I think I like created almost like a double negative here where like they were so overhyped that I assumed that I wasn't gonna like them and now I'm liking them. It's weird how it works out that like, way. Anyways I'm gonna go to bed and then I'll get started with Trust. Hello everyone. I've started reading Trust by Her Hernan Diaz and I'm really enjoying it so far. It's been a little bit since I've been doing any reading in regards to this project or in general because life is busy but I'm starting this one and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm only in the first section so in case you aren't aware this book follows this couple I believe. I think it's gonna follow them throughout the entire book and basically they're just this extremely wealthy couple who ended up making more money in the crash, like the big stock market crash. There's kind of like this mystery around them. They were very secluded and 
a lot of people don't really know much about them. And so first, that sort of seclusion and whatnot led to people being more interested in them. And then when the stock market crashed and they ended up actually making a lot of money because the husband just made the right or it seems to have just made the right choices at the right time with selling off stocks and investing in gold and things like that, people became slightly more suspicious of them. So I'm, like I said, still in the first part of this book. This book is split into four parts from what I know, and each part is basically like a different book. And with each book, you get like a new perspective into the story or situation. So I'm very intrigued to see where it goes because I'm really enjoying this first part. <laughs> Even as I'm reading this, I have lots of questions. And so I'm really intrigued to see sort of like how this continues on and like what they choose to dive into and what they don't and things like that. So yeah, just wanted to give a quick update that this has been started and I will hopefully be finishing this relatively soon. I've been very stressed, I suppose. I don't really know what the emotion is that I'm feeling. There's a lot of spinning plates. I think I say this all the time these days, but it's true. And like I'm at the point now where like I'm getting like twitches in my eye. And so there's a very good chance that tonight I will just be resting and reading. I'm going to do my best to not look at a computer screen after I'm done with work. I'm not going to do any extra work. Anything in regards to the house or the wedding or anything along those lines can wait. If you hear any background noise right now, it is because the house that I'm currently living in had the bathroom sprung a leak. It was a bathroom on the second floor. There was some damage done to the roof on, or like the roof of the living room. That's also been a thing that I've had to deal with this week to a certain extent. So yeah life be lifing but i'm very excited to keep going with this book and to have this as a way to relax a little bit and distract myself hello okay so lighting is weird but i don't feel like dealing with that i've just finished part two of trust or like book two of trust and i'm very confused but in like the best possible way like when you're reading a mystery or something like that and things are slowly getting revealed and you're just like WTF is happening what is this story even going to be uh, that's how I feel about trust right now so the first book followed Benjamin yes Benjamin and Helen Rask who were these very like rich affluent people in New York City and then like the second section was like a memoir of this guy what is his name I've already forgotten it Andrew Bevel and <laughs> so the first book the way that it's written it's like someone else writing the biography of Benjamin and Helen and then the second book is like a memoir or autobiography and like there's a lot of parallels between the two families two couples and so like the entire time I was reading the second book I was like wait this isn't the other people right like literally so many like parallels but not they're not exactly the same at all I'm just like very confused and like the whole time that I was reading the second book I was waiting for Benjamin and Helen to somehow like make an appearance or like there would be some sort of like thread or hint as to how these two are connected these two books uh, but so far, no freaking clue. And then just like looking at the table of contents, there's a third memoir I'm about to read, I think. I haven't started it yet. It's called A Memoir Remembered by Ida Partenza, who is another person who I have no idea who that is. I don't remember that name being mentioned. The fourth part is called Futures by Midris, Midris, Mildred Bevel, who is the wife of Andrew Bevel. And like, what is this book even? <laughs> So uh, I'm, I, I'm hooked. I definitely am going to keep reading it. It's also very interesting the way that this is formatted. Like the first one is very much like this is the story of these people. And this, because the second one is like a memoir, um, it has like a different style. But the thing is, it's, it's like it's an incomplete memoir. So there are chapters that are like this, chapters, pages, sections that are like this, where it's like, college and then the person writing the book is like outlining different things to talk about and so it's like very interesting when like things are filled in or not filled in or there's even like sections where he's like talking about a specific person and he's like anecdote about Mildred's philanthropy here like this is a work in progress sort of story and all the details haven't been filled in yet so that's fascinating too this is this is just like a very fascinating book and I'm just we'll see what we'll see what's gonna happen because I have no clue.
five years later. Hello, good evening. It is 10 p.m. and I've just finished reading Trust. <laughs> it's been a couple days? Weeks? I honestly don't know when the last time I sent an update was. It was I know it at the point in the book is when I like finished part two. And then I never did another update. And it's taking me a while to get through part three. And I meant to do an update at some point, but I never did. And then part four is really short, so I just pushed through and finished the book. Overall, I enjoyed it. I actually think this might be my least favorite, but it's like the also the most interesting potentially to me out of the three that I read. I definitely understand why lots of people want to talk about it. There's like lots of things to talk about with this book though, and I don't quite know where to start. I found the discussion of like narratives and stories and history and things like that and those ideas to be interesting but also like to me kind of obvious or maybe just talked about before maybe that's just also because I'm someone who enjoys reading history books and then also reading alternate not alternate histories but history books that provide alternate points of views and things like that and sort of how stories and histories can be not the full picture. I do have to say the third section out of the four was probably my least favorite partially because it is the longest and partially because I just didn't care about Ida as a character so much and she was just like seems so self-centered in her own story which feels kind of weird to say as someone reading all four of these stories. You just kind of want to know like what's the truth about these people and this couple. And so a lot of the stuff around her father and things like that, while I understood like they needed to lead to a certain place, I wasn't enjoying it in the moment and stuff like that. So there is that. But overall I enjoyed the book. Minor spoiler ahead because I just need to say it for the sake of saying it. But it's really funny because reading the first part of the book, reading about the relationship between Benjamin Rask and H Helen Rask, yeah. Reading about their relationship and reading about the fictional character's rise in finances, there was like a strong part of me that was like waiting for a reveal in that first book about how the wife helped the husband a lot with the stuff. Like there was so much in that book about the wife's ability to do all those like weird not weird but like those like sort of mind games and those like party tricks and things like that and how smart she was that it felt almost obvious like the point of that first book was to basically strongly imply that the wife had something to do with the rise and fortunes of that family without explicitly stating it and part of me is like is that why the husband in real life what is it would be helpful if i knew these characters names if andrew bevel wanted this book biography written about him slash his wife because he could tell that was the implication of the story and he was very uncomfortable with that truth being out there because he keeps talking about how he wants like his wife to be seen as smart but not too smart and all these different things and he puts so many limits on what Ida can know that it feels like he's trying to rewrite his own history which is that is that the point this is all fresh thoughts in my head so now I'm like that feels like that's the point of the book too it's not just about telling the truth but also about how these men in power try to rewrite history in order to benefit them. Anyways, enjoyed this book overall. Maybe I'm gonna end up liking this book more than I thought. I think I'm gonna like, it. I'm gonna enjoy thinking about this book more than I enjoyed reading this book. Though I did enjoy reading this book. So yeah, I have to say this was a very ex successful reading experience for me. Did not think I would like all of these books as much as I did, but here we are. How fantastic. So yeah, let me know down in the comments below if you've read any of these books, which there's probably a high likelihood that you've read at least one of them because these are very popular right now. Leave a comment down below letting me know your thoughts on them because I would love to talk about these books with other people. So yeah, that's all I have for now and thanks for watching.